So how do we radically align schools? Well, first, we just need to look at first principles. When you take a look at what education is for, what does it intend to do on a very basic physical level? The purpose of education is to rewire children's brains. You know, you might say teleologically, the outcome that you're looking for is that you want good compliant workers. You want good citizens, that, uh, that schools are a factory of indoctrination, as well as a little bit of learning. Um, so first, you have to challenge all of those assumptions and unpack what is actually the purpose of education. So my definition, my distilled definition of education is that the purpose of education is to help students reach their personal maximum potential. So help students reach their maximum potential. That is the purpose of education. Now, in a post-AGI world, in a post-labor economics world, then the definition, like what is it that you're trying to, to aim for, you don't necessarily need economically productive citizens. You need civically engaged citizens, sure, but you need thoughtful people that are good at communication. There's all kinds of other things that you can do. Now, also in this hypothetical future that I hope to see and hope to help create is that a lot of people are going to be working a lot less. So we take these two fundamental assumptions that the economic imperative goes away for children and adults and that the purpose of education is to help people, all, all students, children or adult, reach their personal maximum potential. So then in this hypothetical future, we can look at, okay, what kinds of things do you teach in school? You focus on communication skills, uh, reading, writing, basic literacy, uh, civic literacy, history, rhetoric, those sorts of things, because those skills are gonna be far more important building relationships, teamwork. And I don't mean teamwork and, you know, get in a little group and, you know, let the smartest kid figure it out for the rest of the group. I mean like actual teamwork in the way that like, the way that some militaries train it or like Boy Scouts and stuff where it's like, hey, go out onto a field and eight of you figure out how to get this log over that hill. You know, that kind of thing. Um, because the ability to work together and form solid relationships and emotional intelligence that really is going to be so critical. I mean, honestly, I would argue that um, primary education should focus on this a lot more today than it does already. Now, there's also some other basic competencies that I would focus on. Math, STEM, and part of the reason that like uh, math and programming and physics is important is because it fundamentally reshapes your brain. It, uh, when, when children are young, they have more neural plasticity and that allows them to learn things, oh, languages, learning multiple languages. That should be a, a primary things because again, that creates durable neurological benefits uh, for children. And of course, that's not necessarily a problem in much of the rest of the world, but in America where we only learn one language, it's a little bit more of a problem. So challenging all of the base assumptions of what is education for, who is it for, what is it trying to achieve, that's one way that I would radically align education. Another is that uh, the way that education is designed right now, it is so incredibly suboptimal. It's no mystery how to get a good education. You need more one-on-one -on -one time. You need more uh, tutors and mentors, more teachers. So this is one of the reasons why I say in the future, what I hope to see is that there will be a lot more teachers. As uh, job destruction happens, as I think that it will, I think that a lot of people should go into teaching um, because there's such a huge shortage of teachers right now of all grade levels. Um, and again, teaching communication skills, emotional intelligence, relationship building, languages, math, basic programming, history, all of these things we could use more teachers in. Now, in a shorter term, one of the challenges that I get to this idea of radically aligning education is, yeah, you know, uh, Dave, you talk about body first living and, you know, getting rid of alarm clocks, but then how do I get my, my kids to school on time? And my, my challenge there is, why is school so early? Does it need to be that early? That's not an optimal time. Forcing high schoolers to be, to be in class by like seven or 7.30, that's not healthy or natural. But what that is, is it's actually part of an indoctrination ritual. 
The reason that school starts so early goes all the way back to the Industrial Revolution when the factory owners said, you need to be at the factory by six o'clock. And so basically, early start times are there to condition children starting from a very young age to indoctrinate them, to deprive themselves of sleep, to believe that they are not allowed or entitled to get as much sleep as they need. It is also there to coerce them and condition them to ignore the needs of their body. And so this is where it's like, wow, when you look at it through that lens, you realize that capitalism is kind of evil and that the school system is actually part of that system. And so if you were to radically align a school system, you say, hey, school starts nine o'clock and you can have a before school program for, for kids that do get up early naturally. Um, and, and in cases where parents do have stuff that they need to do, but learning like the actual start time of school, 9 a.m. at the earliest, I think, maybe even 10 a.m. where you have more before school activities for socializing, for playing, uh, eating, exercising, those kinds of things. And then you have school go probably till, you know, more or less what it does today, three or 4 p.m. and then no homework. Because again, part of why we have homework, it has nothing to do with grading. It has nothing to do with extra learning because the science is very, very solid here is that more homework does not actually result in more learning. Um, what this is to do though, it is to condition children to again learn that their time is not their own, that you are obligated to be on the clock 24 seven. That is why we have homework. And so that's also why I think that in a radically aligned world, we get rid of homework. Why? Because what we need to be teaching children is that their time when they're not you know, under obligation to someone else is their own, that their body's needs are their own. So yeah, that's the, that's the curious case of alarm clocks and school start times in a radically aligned world. Thanks for watching. Cheers.